So I, I, I hope and I pray that the pastors, as they listen to these words today, they will be encouraged to do what? Or they will be empowered to maximize their full potential as a pastor. It's not time to pack up and run away. It's time to see the Lord. And there were some, some highlights that I planned was to uh, interject during my lecture. You know, um, in Ezekiel 34, where the Bible says God will take his sheep from the shepherd and the pastors who do not protect them and care for them. Sometimes you may want to evaluate yourself to see why your life is in the way it is. Go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 4. Let that be your guide. Let that chapter be the book that will counsel you as a pastor to see what's going on. And I want to tell you, this may not apply to you, but it may apply to others. And if it don't apply for you to you today, if you're not in the situation, please pay attention to it. If we don't treat the saints of God, the members in the church right, they will leave the church. Point blank. I told you I was going to be as transparent as I possibly can. You wonder sometimes why folks leave the church? Sometimes it's not about the pastor, but somebody that you put in charge, you put the wrong person over the right people. They don't treat them good. No respect. No love. People want love and respect. You give respect, you get respect. Amen? That's how it goes. We have this thing we talk about. The, um, the Newton law. Right? Newton the law of motion. For every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So love begets love. Hello? Generosity begets generosity. So when you treat people get nice, they won't leave you for anything. Treat them good. Be careful who you put to lead the people. Did you train them? Did you evaluate them? Dear to the then pastor, it's your call. Check your congregation. Why is it that the people are leaving when you're doing a fine job as a pastor? People don't only leave your congregation because of you, but because of the people that they have to encounter with every Sunday morning. Might be the usher is the problem. The one that guide them in. Pharisee are he being partial. Only put certain people up in the middle, middle aisle and always put certain at the back. You need to check how they are operating. So pastors, my word to you. Do an evaluation of your members, especially your workers. You, you don't have to tell them, just evaluate them. Just watch how they perform. Get some feedback sometimes. Yes, you'll be surprised sometimes who is who, that person that caused the people to leave your, mem your, 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 uh, your ministry. You're doing the best you can. You're loving on everybody. You're, you're doing everything you know how to do, but they're still leaving. And I say, there is no retention in the ministry. It's just like a secular, secular job. Any company you have that have rapid turnover, Something is wrong, absolutely wrong, with that company. The management system is way down, not good. You need a company that retains the people, that has retention. People want to retire on the job. You may not always pay the biggest salary, but guess what? The, 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 the standard uh, and the system is good. They feel like they're going to a home, away from home. And though next door upper a little more incentive, they don't mind stay here because guess what? Life is good. The achievement is good. They can work with it. So it is in the ministry. If you take care of your people, they, they're not going anywhere. And pastor, you alone cannot do it. So as you leave your people good, and you see that something is going on 
over there, they, 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 they're wrapping the, the client, check those that put in position. There might be a Judas among them. You want to check it out, please. And do what you have to do, shift them around. Please hear my word to you. Train and retrain your members. Not because they put them there and they serve for such a long time. Have Bible study with them. Have your own personal training with them. Get their feedback. But if the church is still growing, every now and again just encourage them. Amen? But don't stand for a decline, man. Not when you're doing the best you can. Don't stand for a decline in membership. Find the, find the fix, man. Find the fix. There is a fix. Love them some more. We position the people and put the right people in the position that will love them and care for them and appreciate them for who they are. Remember now, to every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So don't be, they upset when people when they leave. There, are, there, there has to be a reason why they leave. But to encourage you in my closing, in the book of Ezekiel 24, it was bad enough that the people, the sheep were scattered because of the of the of the, uh, the, the action of the shepherd and pastors. But God was concerned about the fact that they didn't even go out there to seek them back. To seek them. Let me say this, sometimes when the people leave the church, don't wait for six months and don't stay up in your pride, the sake of pride. And you, they leave the church, but that will mean you have lost them. It's going to take too long to reach out to them. That's when you lose them. Take it off your pumps and pride, pastors. When you see the people leaving your congregation, call them up. Go after them and talk with them and find out what's going on, especially if you know they're doing them right. You follow what I'm saying? Don't wait and say, well, they want to leave, they leave, they want to come, they come. No. They, they were your responsibility in the first place. And if they are wandering, you will see them in the little church as wandering sheep. And it's your job to go all day. But as someone said, there were 99 that were saved or led in the shelter of the fold, but one was out in the dark night, and the shepherd lead those 99 and went to look for the one in the dark. And he found that which was lost. We can say to my four members who left the church through frustration, that because they dislike your pastor, but the people they put over them, they dislike them. They can't take the burden and the pressure, and they leave, but they are gone, they just leave. If it take too long to find them, yes, they're gone. Don't wait till they're gone. Because it's going to be hard for you to go back and call them from a church that they're not settled in and feel comfortable. So as they start leaving the church, get on the phone, Facebook them and FaceTime them and text them and call them up and go talk with them and find out what's going on and say to them, you, you, you labor with them, you don't want somebody else to take them. They belong to you. Amen? I don't know how much more to say this, and I hope I say it good enough that all pastors from all backgrounds will understand every word I say. And if you have problems understanding my, 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 my way of speaking, I hope there's somebody who can clearly explain to you exactly what I was saying. All right? So may God bless you, and may God strengthen you, and may let His face shine upon you, and give you peace and God bless Conference 2018. We look forward to 2019, God's willing. And we look forward to seeing more pastors coming out to hear the word of the Lord. Amen. And I pray that the broadcast will touch many pastors' lives, especially those who stop pastoring. That they will pick up the button again, the bottom, pick up the mantle again, and run on like Isaiah. He stopped prophesying. When his lip was, was purged, the, the, the boy said, And who will go? He said, Here am I, send me. I pray that the pastor that will say after the hearing of this conference, the hearing of the word of God, we say, Lord, here am I. I'm ready again. Use me, Lord. Here am I, Lord. I want to do your work one more time. For the burden of the pastor is always going to be on the pastor because that's the gift that was given to them. 
and they will not feel comfortable until they are doing what God put in their heart to be done. I know it. Trust me. You know how blessed I feel right now? Hallelujah. I come to this conference. If you think it's as easy as oh, I just say to you all these three days in a row, you took a lot of fasting and praying and reading and studying and, and forgetting what the folks going to say and thinking about what God wants me to say. Hello? So I am blessed by God too. Why you are blessed? And this time for real, I'm through. Thanks for listening. Thanks for coming. God bless you. And I love you. In Jesus' name, amen.